So let's say we're going to play a game where on each person's turn, they're going to keep rolling this fair six-sided die until we get a one. And we just want to see how many rolls does it take. So let's say we define some random variable, let's call it x, and let's call it the number of rolls until we get a one. So what's the probability that x is equal to one? Pause this video and think about it. All right, the probability that x is equal to one means that it only takes us one roll to get a one. Well, that's going to be a one-sixth probability. Well, what's the probability that x is equal to two? Well, that means that we, on the first roll, we get something other than a one, so that is going to be five-sixths. And then on the second roll, we get a one, so that has a one-sixth probability. And we could keep going. What's the probability that x is equal to three? Pause the video and think about that. Well, that means we miss on the first two, so we have a five-sixth chance of getting something other than a one on the first two rolls. So we could say that's five-sixth times five-sixths, or we could write five-sixths squared. And then on the third roll, we have the one in six chance of getting the one. So times one six. And I think you see a pattern here, and you might recognize what type of random variable this is. This is a geometric variable. Now how do we know that? Well, each trial or each roll is either a success or a failure. Every time we roll, we either get a one or we don't. We have the same probability of success, of rolling a one, each trial. These are independent trials. And that there's no set number of trials. It could take us an arbitrary number of trials to get the first success. So that's what tells us that we're dealing with the geometric random variable. Now one question is, is what is going to be the mean of this geometric random variable? Well, we prove it in another video where we talk about the expected value of a geometric random variable. We're really talking about the mean of a geometric random variable. And it is a little bit intuitive. If you were to just guess, what is the mean of a geometric random variable where the chance of success on each roll is 1 6, you might say, well, maybe on average it takes you about six tries. And you would be correct. The mean of a geometric random variable is 1 over the probability of success on each trial. So in this situation, the mean is going to be 1 over, the probability of success in each trial is 1 over 6. So it's equal to 6. So one way to think about it is, on average, you would have six trials until you get a one. Now another question is, what's a measure of the spread of a geometric random variable? And we don't prove this in another video, maybe I'll do it eventually, that the standard deviation of a geometric random variable is the mean times the square root of one minus p. Or you could just write this as the square root of one minus p over p. Now in this situation, what would this be? Well, the standard deviation of this random variable, this geometric random variable, it's going to be the square root of 1 minus 1 sixth, all of that over 1 sixth. So this is going to be equal to the square root of 5 sixths over 1 sixth, which is equal to 6 times the square root of 5 sixths. And this is going to be approximately equal to 5 divided by 6 is equal to that. We'll take the square root of that and then multiply that times 6 gets us to about 5.5. So approximately equal to 5.5. And what's interesting about a geometric random variable, obviously the lowest value here in this case is 1, 2, 3. It can go higher and higher. But it can go arbitrary. You could get really unlucky. And it might take you a 1,000 rolls in order to get that 1. It could take you a million rolls, very low probability. But it could take you a million rolls in order to get that 1. And so another thing to realize about a geometric random variable's distribution, it tends to look something like this, where the mean might be over here. And so you have a very long tail to the right of your mean. And this is classic right skew. And so all geometric random variables distributions are right skewed. They have a long tail of values, an infinitely long tail of values they can take to the right. Now one last question. Instead of dealing with a six-sided die, what would be the situation if we were dealing with a 
sided die. What would then be the mean of our random variable, and what would be the standard deviation of our random variable? Pause this video and think about that. Well, the mean would be 1 over 1 12th, because you have a probability of 1 12th every time of getting a 1. We're assuming we're playing the same game now with a 12th sided die. So 1 over 1 12th would be 12. So on average, it would take 12 rolls to get that first one. And then our standard deviation is going to be essentially this times the square root of 1 minus 1 12th. Or actually, let me write it this way. It's 1 minus 1 12th over 1 over 12, which is the same thing as 12 times the square root of 11 twelfths. 11 divided by 12 is equal to take the square root and then multiply that times 12. And you get about 11.5. 11. Point five. And so you can see with a 12-sided die, it has the same pattern, where you have your mean of your random variable, and then you have a standard deviation that goes a reasonable bit on either side of the mean. It's almost equal to the mean, in, actually in both situations. It's a little bit lower than the mean. But then there's many, many, many values that go far to the right of your mean. And so you have this classical right skew for a geometric random variable.